Hi, it's Ben from Ticketmaster, and I'm here at Edinburgh Fringe with John Bishop. How's it going? It's good, Ben. I'm enjoying it. Thank you. We're here in this nice, salubrious abattoir building, which is a place that you can only get in if you've got a pass. And I bet it looks probably looks a lot nicer on there when actually they little do they know we're just in a shipping container. <laughs> if it is, it's a lot of shipping containers put together, but what they've done is they've created a little space because it's so hectic outside that uh, that the acts can come in and get a drink. Because this year I've done eight Edinburghs now, and this year seems the busiest that I've ever seen it. To be honest. Because I was going to ask sort of how it compares to, to the shows you've done before. Like, do you do you remember the first time you were here and how you felt? Oh God, yeah. The first time I was here, um, and I, the show. I tell you what, the first time I was here, I was in a place called the Cellar in the Pleasance Courtyard, and the room would hold about thirty-five. And there was a couple of nights I cancelled because nobody came. Uh, there was one night. Uh, I turned up and there was five people, and when you do a slot, you do an hour. And I, and I said to I said to the the venue manager, I thought, five people. I said I can't do an hour to five people. I said can't we give them the money back? And she said, well, not really. Only two have paid. So <laughs> so I, went, I couldn't even say so. So I had to, I ended up actually going in and buying a drink for the whole audience and saying like, let's just have a drink and sit down, which. There's a practice I'm not going to employ on tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but probably not now, right? You're doing much bigger rooms now. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a great... For people who haven't been to the Edinburgh Festival, it's got a great buzz about it, but from a comedian's point of view, it's a great grounding place because every hour, most slots anyway, are an hour long, and each hour gets a little bit better, a little bit tighter. So for me, building up to a tour, it's great because I just grind the material down until, until it, it's in a proper shape. Because you're doing a work in progress at the moment for the Winging It tour. Yeah. Uh, how literal is that title? <laughs> at the moment, very. <laughs> um, well, the way it is, when I start off, I don't, I don't really... I'm not one of those people who walks around with a, a notepad writing loads of funny things down that happens. So I do lots and lots of warm-up gigs is the best way of, of me getting a, a, a kind of structure to it. Because when I when I write it down, it never looks funny. It just doesn't look funny, and so you have to make it breathe and make it live. And so we came up with the title "Winging It" because uh, Amy, who works for my promoter film, Mac, we were in the office, and she said, "Well, what what, what are you doing in these warm up gigs? What are you getting out of these warm up gigs?" And I said, "I don't know. I'm just winging it." And she went, "That'll do." <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's how we came up with it. Takes the pressure off as well, right? Yeah, the yeah. title, they're like, oh, the, if it's it. casual. You need to call it something, don't you? I mean, every comedy show should be called, look, I'm going to try and be funny for a bit. That's it. So how's the show shaping up? I mean, is, is Edinburgh helping? You're, you're on your fourth show today. I am. I, I'm on my fourth show, but I've done plenty of warm-up gigs before this. So I just did, I did a little mini tour around the Highlands, which was great. Um, so it's taking shape, I, I, I suppose, in some respects. By the time we start the tour off proper in October, I don't want it all complete before October because I want I want things that I know well that works, that works, that works, and then it, it, anything can happen between now and October. I mean, like like it's bonkers the way the world's gone, hasn't it? With Donald Trump, Brexit, all kinds of things going on. So I don't know what's going to happen. So I don't want it all in place because I want I, I want to be able to mess with it still. When I get there. So is that where you kind of draw the inspiration from for your material? Just, you know, obviously just things that are happening now. Well, well there's things you can't ignore that's happening in the world, but it, it's always, it's everyday life. That's my thing. It's no, there's no mystery to it. There's no mission. There's no, like, I'm going to get on stage and try and change people's view of the world. I'm just going to go on stage and hopefully make people laugh for a few hours. So, that, so whatever else is going on outside can stay outside. We're in a room and we can all share a little bit of happiness. And your tour starts middle of September. Can I just say that was a lovely sentence, wasn't it? We can all share a bit of happiness. That was, yeah, was I nice. Think that, I think that might be the next title we saw. <laughs> or well, the, sub, the subtitle yeah. for this one. Come and share some happiness. <laughs> um, the tour starts in the middle of September. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It starts, it gets into theatres in September and arenas at the start of October. Do you uh, get excited about touring? Is, is there something that you will build you up between now and then? It's the this job is the third best job in the world. There's no doubt about it. The first best job is being a rock star, because when you're a rock star, it doesn't matter what you do. You go, well, yeah, of course, 
I'm having loads of sex with creepies and throwing televisions out the room. I'm a rock star. You can dress how you want. You can do whatever you want when you're a rock star. But that's I'm, not an insight into your not, into your touring no. life. <laughs> Mind, only I don't drink when I tour. I don't. I don't even eat cheese when I tour <laughs> to to look after me voice. Uh, then the second best job is being a footballer if you're a footballer in a good team, and then the third best job by a million miles is a comedian. So you get excited by the fact that you you are literally going different places every night and just getting that that warmth. Just don't like the sound of laughter. It's brilliant. And at the moment in Edinburgh, you're, you've got a special housemate, right? Not roommate, housemate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, man, for me and Jason, what happens when you come up? It's easier to rent a flat for the period that you're up here for a few weeks rather than uh, rather than get a night in a hotel, etc. So we've ended up, and I've never shared with a comedian when I've been up here before, so I'm sharing with Jason now. So we are like the odd couple. We are like two middle-aged northern men walking around the flat <laughs> with towels around our waist waiting to get in the bathroom. So it's slightly slightly different from your first time here, then. Very different from your first time. It's very different <laughs> from the first time here. And you know what? And it's But it's joyful because we have sort of slightly different body clocks as well. Jason's very much a night bird and I'm an early bird. Uh, and it, it's odd because, like, like I... If I had my kids were little, he's got little kids, so it's different for him. But as my kids now look like him, my kids are men. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got blokes with beards, so to Jason, it might be odder than what it is to me. I'm just in the house with another bloke. Well, we're speaking to him later, so we'll find, oh, we'll find out what he says about you. Find, find out what the other way around. Um, he does a terrible impression of me, which, to be fair, is completely inaccurate. So should we try and get that on camera later, is that... No, because <laughs> if you want to know what I sound like after a stroke, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, and, you know, you've, you've done this a while. You've been doing um, the circuit. You've done Edinburgh. What piece of advice would you give to kind of the people who are playing to five people in a room at the moment? Keep going. Just keep going. Do it because you love doing it. It's, it's not a job. Comedy is not a job where you can plan a career path in the same way as other normal jobs. But also within the world of entertainment, it's not it's not a job where you can say, well, if I get that, this will happen. If I get that, this will happen. It doesn't automatically go like that. And for me, I'm just very, very lucky to have come to it. And obviously going on tour and doing arenas is what some people might aspire to, but it's got nothing to do with that. I would, I'll be doing this job for five years longer than anyone wants me to. <laughs> I know that, and I know there's a cruise ship waiting with my name on it. And I know when I'm on it, people go, oh, he used to tour in the arenas. Well, yeah, but I'll still be winning because I'll still be on the stage making people laugh, and that's that's why you do. If you do it for other reasons, it will catch up with you. But if you do it because you love it, it's the best job in the world. Well, before those cruise ships, you've got your tour, uh, yeah. which we're very much looking forward to. Thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us here as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't want people to wait until I'm on a cruise. Yeah, come, to come to the tour. Yeah, come to the tour first. Be better. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your rest of your Edinburgh. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.